Hi and welcome to this From the Ground Up. We are looking at regions today. So what are regions in eCognition? A region more or less is a subset that you can define within a rule set. And um, yeah, it's a defined area which you can then process individually. You can have multiple regions. Um, they are stored in a variable. And then it's also part of the domain, which means that you can use the region in the domain definition and focus processing, for example, on that region. Right, you can improve the performance uh, through the limitation of the analysis on specific areas. And that helps you during development of a rule set, but also during production. Right? You're gonna save a lot of time if you're only doing the analysis on areas that you're interested in. So a few bullet points here. Within one project, you can have several regions. They are stored in a variable, so you're not limited in this area. Uh, defined region can be used in the domain. That's what I mentioned previously. I'm also going to show that to you in a second. You can create regions using the algorithm update region. That's a very important algorithm here. And regions are per se not visible. You can display them. I will show you that, but per se they're not visible. So if you create a region, you don't see it afterwards, right? Let's have a quick look on how you can create regions and how you can use them. First of all, you can define a region by an object. If you have an area of interest, you create an object based on the AOI, you can define a region based on that object, and that's gonna be a bounding box around that object. Second, you can define a region by coordinates. That's what I'm gonna show you in a project, so you can find the coordinates and create those regions based on coordinates. Let's quickly have a look at using coordinates to create a region. If you do so, you have to define the origin of the region. That's defined in project units from the bottom left corner of the scene. This case, 300, 300. And then you also have to add the extend. Um, in this case, 200 in X direction and 200 in Y. And then you have your region. What you also can do is you can move and resize regions. So you can shift regions if you like, and you can resize them if you need to. Number four, you can use a region as domain and do individual processing only in the specified region. So you can limit the processing on your regions and you do not have to process the whole scene. Number five, you can transfer a region in a map for individual processing of only this subset. So you also can work or use regions with maps. If you don't know how that works or what maps are, please check out the material on maps and also the material regarding regions and maps. Enough talking, let's have a look at a project. You're also gonna find that project in the zip folder. If you download that and unzip it, you're gonna find a PDF and also this DPR file. Simply use drag and drop to open it. And that's how it should look like. I already changed the color composite here. So I'm displaying near infrared, red and green. You also can adjust the stretch to maybe standard deviation, whatever you prefer. And we also have a rule set here in the process tree. Um, two sections, one is called create a region using objects, the other one is called create a region using coordinates. Let's have a look at the first one, what happens here. First we use a algorithm called delete image object level, just to clean up if there are image objects. You actually can automatically re-execute this section of the rule set, for example, it's gonna delete first image objects if there are some and then execute the rest. What we then do is a vector-based segmentation. So we do have a vector here, as you see also in the few settings. Let's have a look at this one. I'm gonna change the color to yellow, increase the outline. So these two areas, so we have two polygons. And what we do in a vector-based segmentation is we are transferring them into the image object world. So we created image objects that are representing the outlines of the vector. And you see here the blue line, we have an image object level called level one. Now let's go to the interesting stuff. So the third process here, we have to use update region to create a region, okay? And what we wanna do is we wanna create a region based on an image object. 
So what we defined here, we have changed the domain to image object level because we want to create a region based on an image object. We have one level, level one, class filter none. We, have, uh, we haven't classified anything, so we cannot define anything here. Um, and then the condition here is interesting. Let's have a look at this value one. What is this? So it's a thematic layer feature thematic attribute, thematic object attribute, ID. So if an object has exactly the ID two, so the information of the shapefile here in this column ID of the shapefile, if this is two, then use this object and create a region. Here in the variable, you define the name of the region. So that's the name of the variable where the region is stored. You can type in anything you like. And from domain, that's the mode. So what you want to do in this update region algorithm, in this case, we want to create a region based on an image object that we've defined in the domain. You see, we have quite a few options here. Set by origin extent. That's what we're going to do in the next step. Um, set by min max coordinates, move resize. That's what I mentioned before. You also can move and resize regions. You can create regions from arrays. Uh, check balance, active pixel and assign. So there are a lot of different options, but in this case, we're gonna focus on, where is it from domain? Let's execute this one and let's see that we don't see anything, right? Again, also as mentioned before, a region is per se not visible. What could we do? We actually could use a feature down here to display information of image objects. And that would make our region visible. And the feature we can look for is called is object in region. So here you're gonna find a feature. If it's not there, you can create it for any region. Um, and that's gonna give you a value of one if an object is or falls within the region um, that you have chosen here and zero if it does not. Simply double click it and now you see here, this has the value of one, so it's highlighted in white. This has zero. So this one was or is our region based on the information of the shapefile, the column ID, this one, it looks like as if this one had the value of two in the ID field of the shapefile. Um, we can also quickly check this. Um, let's display the thematic layer attributes. Right, so we have an ID column. One has the value of two, that's this one, and this one has the value of eight. And we created a region based on an object that has this ID two in the shapefile. Okay, so that's nice. What can you do with it? Um, as mentioned before, you can limit the processing based on regions and you can define that in domain. Um, let's do simply chessboard segmentation on our level. And here in the region field, you can choose your region. In our case, it's called my first region. And apply it, execute it. And then you're gonna see it's only applied in our region that we've created previously based on this object. And now we also can classify it. Assign class if an object is uh, has the value one in the feature that we looked at previously, I'm gonna put it into the class is object in region. So how could we get a chessboard segmentation in this neighboring object? As we've seen before in the attribute table, it has an ID value of eight. So I'm simply gonna go in here just to test it, execute it, change it to eight. Now this is probably our region. I'm gonna check it with the feature. Nice. And now when I execute a chessboard segmentation, it will do it in here because that is our active region. And just a side note, you also can use a vector in the domain. So you don't have to define the ID. You do a vector-based segmentation. You define then in update region, the vector in the domain, and then 
every object that overlaps with your vector is defined in the region. Sweet. Let's have a look at the next section. So first section was create a region using objects. Now we're gonna have a look at create a region using coordinates. First step, delete the level. Then we're gonna do a coarse chessboard segmentation across the whole scene. And now we're gonna define a region based on coordinates. And the mode is now different. What we used before was from domain. Now we are using set by origin extent. So origin X and Y is 300 in this case, and you have to go from the bottom left corner of the scene. Um, and coordinate units are pixels, so it's gonna count the pixels, and that's gonna be the size based on that origin of the region, also in pixels. Execute this, so where's my region? I have no idea. We can simply display it here. Um, and we're actually using the same variable, my first region. You could name it my first, my second region or something like that. So you're gonna keep the previous region. And now we can do a finer segmentation only in that region, again, defined here in the domain. All right, uh, maybe something that's also interesting is checking out the features that we offer. Um, Let's have a look at region. So I'm filtering it based on this string. Um, so we have the object features. That's what we used is object in region. So if it falls an object into the region, it's gonna get a value of one. If not, it's zero. And we have more. So check those out. They might be interesting for you. Area of classified objects in region, for example or relative area of classified objects in region. So if you're interested in statistics, if you want to know what, what is the forest cover in this and that object, and you first define that this object is a region and so on, you know what I mean. Um, these statistics can be very helpful. Then image layer statistics, actually you can get the mean layer statistics within a region of a layer, also standard deviation, all right, so yeah, just wanted to mention this as well. So I didn't show you everything. Uh, we just scratched the surface, but now at least you know that regions exist in cognition, what you can do with those. And now you can go ahead and think about how to implement those in your workflow and how they can be helpful in developing a rule set in the production and so on. All right, thank you and goodbye.